Hi guys, I'm Hannah and I'm here on the Heart Centred Visionaries podcast or YouTube channel and I'm really excited to invite Ahmed to talk with us today. So Ahmed is a hypnotherapist and a good friend so I'm really excited to see what he has to share with us today. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> good to have you. How are you doing? Thank you very much for uh, for inviting me. Um, doing great. A very sunny day somehow. It started uh, the, the weather didn't start this good in in Paddington, and now it's it's sunnier. So um, yeah, very good. You know, we're uh, interesting times and uh, going through challenges and and opportunities and exploration at the time. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And exactly. you're and you're back in you're back in London. So Ahmed's been back to France, haven't you, for a while? And now you're back in the UK. Yes. So my family, uh, part of my family, is based in France, and um, with my wife and my daughter, we uh, we spent part of the lockdown um, in in the south of France, which is not a bad thing per se. So no. we had good weather. We had nice food, nice wine. Um, it was still strange because. We were not home, and um, you know, um, it was a different situation. But cannot complain too much. Went to the beach, had a swimming pool. It was pretty good. <laughs> right. So, how was this? I know we we're talking earlier, uh, catching up. But how was the the dreaded C word, <laughs> COVID? How has that affected you um, and your business? Because obviously, yeah. you know, as I know, you were doing hypnotherapy in person in London, and now. Yeah. you saying about transitioning online so tell me more about what your how it's affected your work and what your how you're adapting to that right now um yeah it's affected my work in a major way because i suddenly i could not see people physically anymore and i was very hesitant in the beginning with the whole idea of uh doing sessions over zoom um simply because like hypnotherapy is is a like it's a relationship um, therapy. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm used to having people in front of me. Um, I'm, I'm in hypnotherapy. I need to calibrate to the person's state um, very, very closely and very physically. I need to, I need to reconnect with their breathing, with their facial expressions, with the change in colors in the blood flow, the energy levels. All these small um, indications are important. Indicate are important is important information for the therapist because. These are the things that tell me that the session is going great, that the person is reacting in a certain way or in a different way. Mm -hmm. And also as a hypnotherapist, um, we use what is happening to our advantage. So we use what we notice in the person, uh, we use the changes that we notice in a person's state to really go with them in that resourceful hypnotic um, state where they can feel uh, totally connected inside and, and have their own experience. Now suddenly over Skype, especially with people that I don't know, that I haven't had interactions mm. uh, with before, it's slightly more challenging because you have to establish rapport with the person, you have to get to know the person, and you have to get them to feel comfortable with you, to open up, obviously. So I was hesitant in the beginning to do that. Then I started doing it, and actually it, 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 it's not the same than being in, in person. I still prefer being physically present okay. with someone. Um, but I've done, yeah, I've done sessions online and it's been, um, it's been good. Clients have been happy with it. Um, you get the occasional, you get the occasional online, um, like Alea, which is sometimes the, the connection drops. Sometimes the screen goes, sometimes the person is, is in hypnosis and their screensaver turns on. So I cannot see oh, them. Gosh. That happened, that happened <laughs> once, not, so yeah. <laughs> not ideal, is it? Um, it's not ideal, but again, it's something that we that we have to work with. Um, it's it's better than not doing anything. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's been one challenge. But again, with every challenge, there is an opportunity, and so the opportunity that that is present right now, and the opportunity that I'm exploring is also to, as you know me, I I like recording things. I like um, putting stuff out there, whether it's um, podcasts or 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 uh, programs. Like I have this quit smoking program that I. That I'm that I'm still working on on kind of mass marketing, but it's ready. It's been recorded, and so I was thinking I naturally enjoy this. I naturally enjoy recording and and putting content out there, and mm -hmm. also putting together content. Um, 
so I was I was thinking I, I might use as well this opportunity to start producing more content or to start preparing for more online uh, content mm -hmm. which I think many people are facing this podcast yeah. is, a, is a proof of it so yeah I'm, that's I'm very cool. to on that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So um, just to, I want to kind of d dive into hypnotherapy for people that yes. for people that don't quite understand what it is, because I've experienced some very powerful sessions with you. So also, um, it's so incredible how it just taps you into that resourceful state, as you said. Yes. And I think the work I did with you is, it just changes your mindset. You know, that, that reprogramming the subconscious mind through hypnotherapy is very powerful and very um, just like grounding. I felt a, a big change and more connection with my body. So I'd love to know, can you tell us more about uh, hypnotherapy and how it can help people in their lives? Absolutely. Well, th thank you to start with. Thank you very much for, for your kind comments. Um, hypnotherapy is a broad word. Uh, the word hypnosis doesn't actually have a... Uh, technical scientific agreed upon definition um, that, but the what is agreed upon is that the hypnotic state the trance state is a state that's actually naturally occurring in the human being so the very simple example of that is sometimes people are driving and as they are driving they are looking at the road and all they know is that they they drift somewhere and then they, they kind of wake up half an hour later and they find that ha they have arrived to their destination. Mm. Um, some people experience these states when reading books. I do experience that type of flow state when reading books. Um, the meditation state is also not far from the trance uh, hypnotic state. So that's the state that we go in. It's a state of connection. Um, it's, it's obviously a state we generally do hypnotherapy with eyes closed because it allows the person to focus fully on their internal experience and to represent experiences inside. So it's like having, you know, as human beings, we have like our own theater inside with our internal voice, mm -hmm. with our visual representations, with our kinesthetic feelings that, that occur. And the hypnotic state is very useful to, as you said, rewire emotional experiences, for example, because once you go in that hypnotic state and you go deep enough into it, um, the experience is very comfortable and obviously the presence of a therapist can help the person to go revisit certain difficult um, situations in a different way, experience them totally in a different way, mm -hmm. or to project them themselves in a future where they are successful, where they are doing the things they, they want to do, where they connect with their bodies, with, you know, all kinds of things, really. Mm -hmm. It can be used. It's a creative state, so it can be used in any shape or form. Um, one of the things we do in hypnotherapy, which I personally love, is deep trance identification so like imagining for example a person who inspires you a lot and you you literally picture yourself stepping in their skin and living their life through their eyes wow. so okay. exactly so there is an element of connection there is an element of relaxation very important because mm -hmm. the reason why hypnotherapy is a therapy is because it's also a relaxing state mm -hmm. so it's very useful with things like like anxiety addictions um, we use it with, for weight management as well, um, for psychosexual disorders, for um, all kinds of things. So because it's a very relaxed state, the person can really settle down and be more resourceful, which mm -hmm. they might not be able to do. For example, if someone has a phobia of a certain animal or, or a certain situation like traveling on a plane or whatever, in their representation, when they look at that situation, they usually represent the, the, the situation that scares them. Mm. But when we work on, on these things in hypnotherapy, we don't represent it that same way. We understand how the person represents their experience, but then we change that a little bit. Uh, we make the, the animal a bit smaller. We make the situation a bit different. And it's all that work of changing the experience. And as you said, you said the word changing. It's all about changing. It's never really about going from a fixed um, outcome to another fixed outcome. It's all about allowing the change work to happen spontaneously. My style of hypnotherapy is called Ericksonian hypnotherapy, which is a very permissive uh, type, of, type of induction. So okay. I, didn't I really generally, was that, sorry? I didn't realize that. Tell me more. <laughs> so what that means, what the, the, the Ericksonian style of hypnotherapy is a type of hypnotherapy that taps 
pretty much entirely into the person's existing resources in their life. So mm -hmm. I could tell you um, the very common like examples. If I wanted to take you to a nice place, mentally, I could tell you, Hannah, imagine yourself walking on the beach and as you're walking on the beach, you get this beautiful sunlight, the, 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 the water is blue, it's very nice and you're feeling the sand under your feet. And you might very well enjoy that because you might have a nice connection to the beach. Mm. However, if you happen to go to the beach two weeks ago and you got a sunburn or you walked on something that hurt you or you had a, a, a very bad experience when you did that, me mentioning the beach to you is going to recall in your mind an experience that's not necessarily pleasant. Mm. So in, instead of telling you, imagine yourself in a fixed situation that I have constructed, I will tell you, imagine one time in your life where we were, you were in a wonderful place when you felt amazing. You were surrounded by people that you like, people who you had a great time with. Um, and now as you can recall that place, you can start recalling more details. You can start immersing yourself in that experience. The beauty of that is that every single one of us has one of these experiences. Mm -hmm. But your special place where you want to go to and my special place are not the same and they, don't need, they do not need to be the same. So that's what we, that's what we do in, in Ericksonian hypnotherapy is we do not fix our map of the world on the client. Mm -hmm. We allow the person, and that's why it's also a very creative state because the person goes into their resources and they tap into what they already have in life. That has two major. Yeah, sorry, go for it. No, no, I was going to say. I, no, I just, I was going to say, I love that um, what you're describing because it is so true that you know your place of peace might be different to my beach that I love to go to, right? And I think, and what I experience with you is, it is going back to that resourceful state where you are in a space that you feel relaxed. Mm -hmm. And there's that other technique that you did. I loved it. The, the like the timeline therapy, mm -hmm. you know, where you, as you said, you step into your future self. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so powerful for anyone listening is that like imagining where you want to be. Yes. Because then you're connecting with that person and it can kind of really help you shift awareness, can't it? So um, I'd love to know as well, um, what are, what are the main changes you see in people you work with? Like what is the, I guess there's lots of changes, but what is the kind of significant theme that you see with your clients? Yeah. The consistent, obviously every client comes with a different objective in mind. Some people want to quit smoking. Some people want less anxiety. Some people want to sleep better. Some people want to get rid of a phobia. Some people have um, another type of, so everyone has a different problem that they want to work on. Um, so obviously the outcome would be different. Mm -hmm. um, however, the one thing that's very consistent is that in my work, because my work is, again, the word hypnotherapy is a very broad term and I use a various set of techniques and of schools and of philosophies in my work. I, I use elements of mindfulness because for me, the connection with the body, with the muscular relaxation is a necessary element to a fuller, deeper connection. So if we talk about the relaxation for one moment, that's the fundamental, I would say, unifying, um, unifying element in all the therapies that I will be doing with any client. Mm. I will always invite them to go relax. The word relaxation is misunderstood. Let me tell you why. The word relaxation, if you think of relaxation as being uh, sitting on your couch watching Netflix, that to me is not relaxation. Mm. That is actually stimulation because watching Netflix watching a movie with lots of action, lots of colors, there is a huge amount of, of um, stimulus that's coming your way and emotional, uh, physical. You're, you're not actually settled in a physical state that necessarily relax because the, the posture that you have on your couch might actually be bad for your back mm -hmm. and your back might be nagging you without you consciously realizing. So the word relaxation for me is, it's a state of connecting with, with a state that's, that's relaxed, but very purposeful and very energetic at the same time. And so the other element that I generally see with my clients, a lot of my clients, when they wake up from the hypnotic state, when we, when we exit the hypnotic state, a lot of them open their eyes and they look refreshed. They look mm -hmm. very happy. And they say, wow, it's like I had a night's sleep. It's like I slept for a whole <laughs> So there's this element of, 
and again, this is available in, in some scientific articles, but it's still kind of speculation. But there is this parallel between the hypnotic state and the so-called REM sleep state, where we dream and effectively, again, assumptions, but dreaming is assumed to be a way for us to also rewire our reality. Mm. And that's why hypnotherapy can be such a powerful tool because we can allow people to, as you said, reprogram certain behaviors. Um, I'm always very careful with the words reprogramming because um, reprogramming implies that I am a programmer and you are um, uh, uh, some kind of computer or some kind of machine that I'm going to reprogram. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, because when working with the human beings, we are extremely complex beings. We are unbelievably, um, we have many, many layers. And so in, in my work, I do use the so-called behavioral techniques, which are purely rehearsed. It, it's like behavioral techniques are like planning. Mm -hmm. And the timeline therapy that you mentioned, mm -hmm. the timeline uh, technique that you mentioned, which I love, is amazing because it is a kind of planning. It is a kind of, for example, if you have this important project, you step into your future self and then you look back and then you kind of reverse engineer the steps that you need to go to where you want to go. Mm. Um, if, you're, if you want to revisit a past experience, having a timeline is very useful because once you represent that timeline, it's very easy for you to step to when that experience happened or to step before that experience happened or to step just after that experience happened. And you can play around with that to again, change the perception very useful when we work with trauma for example mm. trauma is again one of these states that we want to want to change because the traumatic state is a very overpowering state and so you don't want to necessarily take someone who has trauma to their trauma mm. you want to take them to a place where it's kind of close enough but they're still in full in they're still in possession of their abilities of their creative powers mm. um the other thing I would say, which to me is very important, and I've, you know, this is available on my website. I've, I have a blog series on this subject, which is the the interconnection between between the how how do the 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 two kind of fundamental parts of our autonomic nervous system and our resourcefulness. So the reason why I say relaxation is misunderstood is because um, relaxation, when we go into this connection with the body, when we settle down the breathing settles down there is a um, one of the techniques that i love is the is the progressive relaxation which is literally going relaxing from the top of the head to the toes and naming the parts and connecting to the parts and engaging a conversation with the parts mm. and there before i did this there were parts of my body that i never like i never connected to my forehead i never <laughs> thought let me close my eyes and imagine that my forehead is relaxing and that the you know that the that the skin is kind of stretching that the muscles are releasing tension it's not something that we do regularly no. but when we do it there is this because attention bring takes the energy so when you're focusing on your forehead even mentally your brain is directing more blood to that to that area of the body and so mm -hmm. by scanning you're kind of saying hello to parts of the body that are sometimes disconnected very very useful in chronic pain for example lower back pain People who have lower back pain, they tend to be, they tend to not just suffer from the pain, but they tend to also panic about it. Mm -hmm. And they tend to want to shut off that part of their body. They don't want to talk to it. They don't want to, they want to, you know, because it's painful or the neck or the shoulders. And, you know, people will literally tell you, I wish, I wish that went away. Like, I wish the pain just went away. And somehow they're telling you, I wish that part went away because it's, it's painful. It hurts me. Mm, it's so, it's so, that's so powerful what you're saying about, because I think, so often in life we're not taught how to connect with our body and yeah. what you describe and what i experienced is like you're opening up your like body intelligence for it to tell you what to do instead of being in the head which we are so often in life so okay. what, what it helped me do is kind of just connect like you say with those parts of your body that you know i've had stomach pains a lot of my life you know about and it helped me connect with that part of my body and actually oh yeah i do feel more connected and breathe into that part so i think for anyone well for everyone mm -hmm. hypnotherapy is an amazing tool and the relaxation that comes with it is so beneficial so um i'd, I'd love to know as well like you've shared a lot about your work um 
what what led you to hypnotherapy because I know when we met it was about three gosh was it three or four years ago I think now yeah. uh, at a networking event uh, group in London and I remember you just being so like passionate and fired up about like health and well-being and everything and it was just in great the chats we had and and then you was you went to study hypnotherapy so if you I'd love to, for you to tell us how you what led you to hypnotherapy from your job as a stockbroker it's very different <laughs> it is very different so uh, it kind of happened organically when we met yes it was I think that we met in um, early 2017 and when we met at the time I was um, there was a, I, I, I worked in finance for about uh, 15 years and um, I got to a point where I just, you know, I, I got fed up a little bit with the, with the stress of the work. It, it kind mm -hmm. of started getting to me. Um, and you, you, you might say that I was going through like a beginning of a midlife crisis where I was like, I'm, I'm, I was 36 at the time and I was saying, hmm, <laughs> do I see myself doing this in 10 years? Um, and the answer kept coming back as not really. And so I thought, okay, um, two choices here. You know, this voice that's coming to me that's saying time to change, time to do something different. Um, I thought I could either shut it down or I could either go and explore. And that also happened at the same time that I, that it was, it was a time where I started reconnecting with my body because for 10 years, funnily enough, the, the, between age like 25 and 35, um, working really um, very, very intense hours and the financial crisis. And as, as you said, I was, a, I was a financial trader. So I was on the financial markets all day long. Mm. Um, it, I was disconnected from my body. I was smoking, um, eating all kinds of unhealthy um, food. Um, I was living stress day in and day out. Um, and on top of that, um, there were evenings where I, where I had more alcohol than I probably should have, which mm -hmm. compounds the fatigue. And so like I spent probably seven to 10 years of my life being in a state of constant fatigue, constant stress, pushing myself, performing because it worked and I was performing and I, you know, um, it, it worked pretty well for me. And I, I was in wonderful places and worked with very smart people. In, 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 I, I had the opportunity to be in, in great places, but it just was getting to a level where I needed to reconnect with my body. And as you know me, mm. that connection with the body for me is very, very strong. And once I started reclaiming my physical health through exercising more, uh, through starting to quit smoking and to be healthier, um, exploring nutrition, food, what, what is it? What does it mean? What are we eating? What are we doing with it? Little by little, my first idea was to create some kind of... Um, my first idea was to build um, a fitness app. Yes, I remember because yes. that's, what, <laughs> that's what you were so excited about and fired yes. up about. And I remember going, "Oh, that guy is so like <laughs> passionate and inspired by what he does or what he he envisions." So yes. I remember, because it's, uh, yeah, because I was as a <laughs> as, um, as a child and as a teenager, I was always very sporty. I was always running, exercising, lifting playing game, um, sports, uh, teams or individuals. So I was very sporty. And that, that physical uh, connection, that physical part was always important to me. Mm -hmm. Like in my life, the parts of my life where I consider I'm intellectually more active, where I have more ideas and feel more resourceful, tend to be the times of my life when I work out mm -hmm. and when I do physical exercise. And so that, when I started working out again after leaving it for 10 years, that just emerged massively. And I started remembering, literally, I started feeling um, myself when I was 17, 18, in a way. Wow. Yeah. It, and, and it reminded me of many sensations I had totally forgotten. And so I got, okay, I, I started thinking, okay, like this is a part of myself that I actually neglected, that I forgot. And I started reconnecting with that. Um, and then I became passionate about it. I'm glad I didn't do that project because... <laughs> I think that, you know, me saying, it's like, you know, this, this whole entrepreneurship world is when you think you have a great idea, it probably means that there are 10 people already doing it. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But, but that's the thing. It all starts with something that makes you passionate, you know, that because I remember going, oh, that guy is so passionate about this. Like, 
it, it was inspiring you know people kind of get you passionate about something yeah. and so okay so that's so in, it's and it's so interesting you're saying about the body connection because i think people like we say we're so in our heads that we forget and we're kind of the, we're that disconnected from our body yeah. so you going on that journey seems like a, a key part of you almost finding yeah. what you loved in some way do you, do um, you think that was totally i started from the body and then I, I always, you know, I generally had a keen interest also in psychology and the mind and in, in how the mind functions as well. What is the unconscious mind? So all of these things also were intriguing to me. Mm. And what happened is I started attending different seminars, uh, coaching, uh, NLP. Um, and that's little by little how I started. It's kind of what I would say is, is I, it started challenging some ideas that I had about myself, about my mind, about how my mind worked. Mm. Um, it started it, get, it got me to question more. It got me to read more. It got me to do more research. Mm. Again, so, yeah? No, go on, sorry. I, and I want to say on that part as well, because when I was younger, I, I, did, I was reading a lot. I, 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 I love reading books. And I, so that got me to reconnect with also that part that I had totally neglected for mm -hmm. 10 years. And I was like, okay, here's one more thing that used to work for me really well. And I just like, you know, left it out of my life. So... Yes, when you, when you leave parts of your life that have been great for you in the past and you just completely leave them, um, you know, maybe your life is not going to be as good as it was. Maybe you need to reinvite these parts at some point. And that's what happens with many people. They forget some of their resources. They totally forget about them. Um, mm -hmm. So, but let's, so I was going to say, like, I started from the body, then went to the mind and, and trained in all kinds of cognitive, cognitive methods. Mm -hmm. Cognitive methods means methods that are based on language. You need to say this when the person says that. You need to ask this question, or this is the structure of how the language and how the processing cognitive, cognitive, cognitive. Mm. That was never, for me, that was never enough. This part for me is not, is not this, it's not the, yeah. human, the whole human. Because <laughs> you're so passionate about the body as well, that's why. And, and so you, I know you studied all, so many different things. Um, what... And, and you were doing it on the side, weren't you, while you're working in your yeah. stock trade? Yeah. So how was that? Because that's such a different transition. Like, did I, were you open with the people you worked with or was it on? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was half open with the people I worked with. Um, so what I, what I told, I was great. I, I, was, I was lucky enough to work for a company that allowed me to explore. Um, so because I, I originally went to the people I was working with and I said, I think it's just like, I think that my desire to be in this profession is gone. And I was very forthcoming about it. And I said, I think it's time for me to take a break and, and do something else. Mm -hmm. And they were supportive. They said, okay, if that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do and go for it. Um, and after that, we touched base again after six months and they said, hey, we understand you want to do something different, but we could really use your help right now. So why don't you come and, and, and do this project with us, right? So they had a project that I could really be involved in, which was very close to my old skills, but that were actually involved also new skills that I learned on the go. Um, mm. It was a very, very enriching time because I could see the contrast between my old life and my new life in a way. Um, it gave me a critical... Um, um, critical vision, let's say, or, or critical eye on the environment that I was performing in, um, it opened my horizon on many, many new things. So, mm -hmm. but it was strange because I was, you know, parts of the year I was this financial guy traveling all over the world and seeing all kinds of people selling and presenting financial ideas, and then going to my hypnotherapy training and the <laughs> Let's let's do hypnosis and then going to a bodywork training where, you know, hands on and everything. Um, yeah. All of these experiences have brought um, something to me to my life, mm -hmm. including my financial career, which which brought me a lot in my life as well. And I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's not you know I'm not saying that it was a bad part of my life. It's just a part of my life that I wish I wish that when I was 25. I wish that I had the knowledge that I have today that might have allowed me to navigate my financial career in a much, much smarter way. Because when I see these young, you know, these young finance professionals, they start in this job, 
and they want to succeed and they want to give it their all. And it's natural when we are 25, we have so much energy. We, we want to push ourselves. We want to go and mm. it's great. But if there is, again, if we disconnect from the signals that the body is sending, if we disconnect from our physical well-being, um, there might be a price to pay at the end, mm. which, which, you know, and then you go, what's the point? If you're not managing, I tell all of my friends who are traders, I tell them like your most, your biggest asset in your firm, in your company, in your job is, is your system. And when I say your system, I mean their body and their minds. Because mm-hmm. as, as, as people who need to be alert and who need to be reactive and who need to come up with ideas, if they are not physically at, in an optimal physical shape, how can they think optimally? No, it's so, it's so true, isn't it? And like you said earlier, it's like, if you're, if you're not connected to the body, or what I experience as well, if I'm, when I'm not connected to the body, I feel like lethargic, that I don't have creative ideas, but when I'm connected to my body, I feel more energetic, the ideas just seem to flow, I'm like in flow with life. And I think that's such a key part of the work you do, which I love. And, um, and also, like you said, I think a lot of people get stuck in corporate environments and get onto that, you know, hamster wheel yeah. of like, you know, it's like very push energy is the masculine. So what, what, would you, oh, what would you say to your 25-year-old self now? That I'd be interested in that. I would say um, stay connected to your, to your st- like remember to connect with your own, you know, experience daily, many times a day. Having that space of, again, that word, relaxation, right? I, I, one of the ways that I call, you know, and, and again, if you, if you are in that environment, the word relaxation is even looked upon negatively. Oh, you're too relaxed. Some people actually would say that in finance. They would look at someone and they'll go, you're too relaxed. That implies that as a, as a finance professional, you have to be stressed out. You have to be always like shaking and nervous. And like, like you see in the movies, right? But yeah. They're not reality. The people mm-hmm. who perform the best are the people who will, who will be able to stay resourceful and staying resourceful is about connecting with that calm creative flow you know we mentioned the word flow Mm. i truly believe through my experiences and through my intuition and through the people i've worked with including yourself that we do our best work when we are in that flow state yeah Um, some people call it the flow state some people call it the creative state some people call it a grounded state some people call it generative state Mm. it has many names some people call it hypnotic state. Mm. It has many, many names. Um, athletes, when they are having their biggest game of, the, of their career, when they are asked, what happened? They say, I don't know, I was in the zone. Mm. They, say, they say he went unconscious. That's what we say about someone. When, when someone is performing at an incredibly, unbelievably high level, we say the guy went unconscious. It doesn't mean that he, he, it doesn't mean that he passed out or she passed out. It means that they were so into it Mm. that they performed totally. And in order to achieve that total connection and to get most of our resources, it's super important to feel safe. Going back to the nervous system that I mentioned earlier, our nervous system has like two, two guys that are doing the work for us and they are like alternating. It's like a shift. It's like a a day, a a guy who does the day shift and guy who does the night shift except they are always there. One of them is the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight defensive system. Mm -hmm. That's your guardian, that's the the warrior, that's the guy who's there to keep you alive and to protect you from threat. Mm -hmm. And then you have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the guy who does digestion, healing, social conversation, smiling, love, um, you know, reproduction. That part enables all of that. So, and creativity. So when, when someone is stressed out, it's the, it's the guardian and the warrior that's engaged. Mm-hmm. And when the warrior is engaged, it's very, very difficult for the healer, the artistic person, the, like the, the creative flow to emerge. It's mm-hmm. difficult because that warrior is like, no, I need to defend. The warrior, the sympathetic nervous system is very concerned with the present right now. I need to do something right now to sort it out. It's obsessive, it's strong, it's rigid. Mm. Um, and it's valuable. I'm not saying that it's bad, by the way. It is valuable. But in order to go into 
truly creative states, into truly uh, states that allow new possibilities, safety is the first um, feeling safe and feeling connected are fundamental for the human beings. Mm -hmm. When I work with people, my first intention is to make them feel safe and to make them feel heard and understood. Mm -hmm. or not even understood, just heard. It's so important, isn't it? That is, and, and so I'd love to hear, um, and you have so many great practices, what, what are some, just a quick practice that people can start doing to connect more with their body and their you know, intuition? Um, the, my favorite is the progressive muscle relaxation. It's a very well documented technique. It's effectively just like closing the eyes and then scanning from top to the bottom slowly. So like, you know, going, relaxing the top of the head and then relaxing the forehead, the eyes, and, and really going to the parts one by one, mm -hmm. um, feeling the breathing changing. Um, it's a type of meditation, it's a type of body meditation, feeling the legs, feeling the feet on the ground, and doing this over three to five minutes. Mm. Um, it's so simple, it's accessible anywhere, it's free, and it just literally recalibrates and allows to connect um, connecting with the gut as well, very important to have that gut brain connection mm. uh, through the vagus nerve. That's very well documented as well. That's one of my favorite practices. Um, my absolute favorite practice is something that's called the constructive rest position, which is inspired from the Alexander technique. Um, I'm not going to go through the details here, but I could give you a link to a very good demonstration of it um, later. Mm -hmm. And it's literally, it's a, it's kind of a body mindfulness uh, technique where you lie on the ground. Uh, we've done it together, by the way. Oh, so yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. You lie on the ground with, um, with like a book or something solid under your head just to keep your neck stretched mm. um, and knees bent and, and staying in that state with the eyes open and just being present with the body and being present with the breathing and just noticing the points of contact with the ground, uh, noticing how the breathing expands, Noticing, noticing what's relaxing and what's tensing and kind of be present with it mm. and breathing at a natural, like just breathing, um, breathing not slowly and not strongly, just allowing breathing to be, like forgetting about the breathing. Yeah. Right? Um, mm. as, as, we, as, I, as you may know, breathing is, oh, here, here is another thing that I always recommend people to do and that I think is invaluable. And it's kind of all linked to state awareness. State awareness is about knowing, am I in a resourceful state right now? Or am I in a fight or flight, anxious, uh, angry state? And it might seem simple and fundamental, but there is a catch. The catch is that when we are in the angry state, that angry, or not necessarily angry, but like angry, defensive, threatened state, there is again that warrior defense that, that, that comes into play. And that warrior is very certain. That warrior is very stubborn. That warrior is certain that I'm being attacked. The mm. world is wrong. The world is attacking me. I am, I am a victim. Um, and I close off. Mm. And in those states, our awareness of the state itself is pretty much non-existent. Wow. That's, it's just incredible that how powerful the mind is. Yes. Because I know as well that, uh, uh, you know, whenever I'm anxious, you're, it's an automatic response. Your body will tense up. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be resourceful, but it's almost like you get stuck in that state, don't you? And you have to kind of get yourself out of it. <laughs> Which so, is, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. So when people get into those states, breathing is the prime indicator there. Breathing uh -huh. is the one indicator that does not lie. If the breathing is simple, if the breathing is relaxed, if the breathing is flowy and spacious, if you feel space in your lungs, in your belly, in your back, all of these areas are super important for breathing. Mm -hmm. If you feel breathing in your back, like you're literally, you're, you're, you're likely to be fine. If you feel your back expanding and flowing, then you're, you're likely to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you have your muscles in your back, shoulders, neck um, are tense, if you feel that the breathing is either restrained or too strong, if you feel the need to breathe more and faster, and that's what people do when they panic. Mm. Literally, in order to create panic, you need to do this. <laughs> you need to keep inhaling mm. and not exhaling. Well, maybe we'll get you on. We're looking to do some workshops so you can do a, a breathing workshop or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, breathing is part of breathing is is part of the yes. I think breathing awareness is uh, is a, is a good thing to do. And again, you don't need to do it. You know, it's one of these things that you don't need to do it all day long. We we don't need to go into our creative generative practices twenty four hours a day. Yeah, we need to remember to reconnect a few times a day, check in with the system, reestablish that safe connection, reestablish that connection, feel the, the you know, uh, feel the, the body, feel the breathing, be present with it. One thing I would say about this, the, the other thing about the anxious state is that the anxious state is what I call contains itself. So a person who is anxious, they're going to be anxious about not being anxious. Mm. And if you think about that, that's only compounding because that's triggering the same mechanism. So that's only compounding the, the, the physical mechanisms for anxiety and for fight or flight. Right. And that's why it's very, the first thing, that's what I tell people, the first thing to do about stress is to not stress about it. Mm, but that's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> that's when the practice comes into play. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so so I'd also love to know as well because you you love the well, your morning practices and so do I. <laughs> what what is your go to morning practice at the moment? Um, my go to morning practice for the last five years has been a ten minute qigong sequence. That um, qigong is a type of flowy movement with tapping on certain parts of the body that opens up the blood flow that awakens the body. Mm. That is, the, that is one of the first things that I do in the morning. It takes between five and 10 minutes. It's very gentle. It, it includes squatting. So it really gets the, the blood flowing. It gets the body working. It helps the heart to like start waking mm -hmm. up. Um, that's my go-to that I do every day. Mm -hmm. I have other movement routines. You, you can tell that I'm like a bad person. So, <laughs> you yeah. love it. I, I remember you're always experimenting with, with <laughs> with your routines which yes. is great because you can be so creative can't you so many things absolutely like being creative with movement is something that i had never even considered in the past mm. and now i'm like and now sometimes i'd be in my living room and be like oh how many ways could i like how how could i walk differently today <laughs> i love that it's it makes, things, and, it makes yeah. things fun right <laughs> it's, it's fun um it's informative because the brain learns by difference when we move differently and when we do a movement that we're used to do in a certain way but we do it we, we and we, we don't change a lot we change just a tiny tiny bit mm. the brain will learn that there is something different and that's how we can get for example to a better posture that's how we can get to better breathing to better um is, is by making gradual improvements mm. it's all about yeah. awareness and and just i'd love to know just lastly i know you said you're adapting as you said uh, and changing things so what are you are there things any projects or things you're working on at the moment um yes i'm working on two projects so as i said like one of my one of my dormant projects has been the squid smoking program that i developed that i recorded um and it was ready kind of in february um and then i traveled and i i kind of put the whole thing on hold so I'm going through the steps of I'm I'm thinking about how am I going to put it out there. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's a work. It's it's been a wonderful work for me. Like, um, it's a project that took me about eight months to complete. Um, mm -hmm. uh, doing lots of research, obviously tapping into my training as a hypnotherapist, tapping into my training as a coach, tapping into my experience as an ex-smoker, and then also going into like the the science and the research that's been done on the subject and. And literally challenging my own conception of what it is to smoke or what is the addiction. Uh, so that's been a wonderful exploration for me. Um, and I think the program is good, by the way. So Yeah, so how? <laughs> well, I've got the link. When you if you launch it, will you launch it again? We can like share the link. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll I'll give you the link when it's available. I think I think I'll make it available in some shape or form in the next couple of weeks. Great. The other project that I'm thinking about is a kind of a longer term project talking about, again, the corporate place, the corporate space, because I have this corporate guy in me as well. I've, I've been um, in different positions at different corporations, big corporations, mm -hmm. um, at different positions of responsibility from the junior intern all the way to a guy who was running a team um, and even, you know, and, and involved in some significant projects. So... 
um, I have that spectrum of corporate experience that's available to me. And I see the same stories coming to me again from the corporate world, from all types of challenges. It's the same story again. I'm too anxious. I'm too stressed out. I don't know how to communicate with my boss. My boss doesn't know how to communicate with me. I wish they did this. I wish they did that. And my hope, uh, my desire right now is to start building tools. And um, I mean, my intention this year was to start doing seminars, as I said, for, mm -hmm. for the corporates. And that's kind of not possible right now. And so I'm thinking maybe I can take it online. Maybe I can develop um, a course um, that would touch on that would touch on everything we discussed today, the nervous system, the body, the flow, how to be in flow, how to communicate, mm -hmm. um, how to use states for better communication, uh, things like mirroring that we haven't uh, discussed today, but that are also important is like, how can we make, how can we behave in a way that's going to make our environment more likely to be good to us. Mm, I love that. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. It is. And the beauty of it is that it starts with us being in a good state, in a good predisposition. Mm -hmm. So there's an element, as, as we said earlier, like the whole, um, <clears throat> there is an element of need to own our well-being. There is a, an element of owning our well-being, our health. Uh, owning our states, owning our awareness. Mm. We expect the external world or people or any person to be our savior, then that's limited. Mm. Um, and even as a therapist, I never, as I said earlier, I'm not a programmer who programs people. I am not someone who gives the answer to people, but I am there to provide an environment that will allow people to do their own internal work. Mm. it's like you hold the space i think with with any of the work we do we hold the space but people have to do that work themselves and i think they have to be willing to go there and you know we're the only ones that can change our lives so yeah, yeah. we have to we have to put the energy and time into it um, exactly exactly if you're going to do anything in life you either do it with 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 your your best available energy or 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 why are you even doing it why are you even trying if it's if it's Trying implies fail. Like if you're trying, it means you're going to fail. Like you, you, it means you don't really mean it. When we, like, again, one of the metaphors that we use in hypnotherapy, that's a very, very powerful one, is babies. Um, babies, when they grow up and when, when they start learning how to walk, they go through a number of years of trial and error, of standing up and, and falling, of struggling to, to crawl on the, on the, on the ground. Um, but babies see that thing that they want to go for. They see that toy that they want to grasp and they, they will keep trying. They will not stop. Like a baby is not going to say, I tried crawling and, you know, it didn't work. So I'm, 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 I'm not like, you know, one of my trainers used to say, you know, a baby who tries to stand up and, and, and count the first time will say, I'm not a walker. Like I'm not supposed to walk. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. Not. But it's, but that mindset, as you say, is so important because if you, it's almost like if you have that persistence, you're going to achieve what you want. If you just go, well, it hasn't happened overnight, then I'm giving up. And I think that's what people do when they, you know, hit a barrier or challenge. It's like, oh, it's not meant to be, especially in the spiritual world. Like, I'll, I'll just give up. Yeah. But what I've learned is you have to keep going and growth can be uncomfortable, but it doesn't happen overnight. So yeah, you constantly commit to that every I'm day. Fine. Absolutely, um, the whole intention and um, and by the way, the desire to give up it it ha it happened to me a few weeks ago. I was like, "Am I gonna do this? I don't know." Um, the world is challenging. It's fine. It's part of the game. Yeah. Not knowing yeah. what we're doing is part of the game. Um, and then it's again about in this in this situation, it's about reconnecting with what's fundamentally um, again one of my 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 trainers that I admire a lot, he, he calls it your life calling. What's, call, what's, what's life asking from you right now? Mm. What's your calling? And that calling is unlikely to change because of COVID or because of this or that. That calling is usually something that's deep, that's been there for, for a long time, that's been re-emerging re at mm. various points in time. This is something that's also, I see that with a lot of my clients. Mm. Their calling will be um, it will appear very quickly. So there is this reconnection with what we want deeply, fundamentally. 
-hmm. cannot be money. It cannot be a, a beach body. It cannot be a car or a house. Mm -hmm. These things are nice and we, we can, you know, it's natural to want some of these things, but they are not callings. They are not deep motivations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. People have to follow. It sounds cheesy, but it's completely follow your bliss. That's where your calling lies, as you say, I think, and connecting and listening to your intuition in that. Um, I'm not, yes, I, I'm not saying that we should all be pursuing our passion necessarily, because even myself, I think, I know what my passion is. At this point in my life, I kind of, I'm, I'm relatively clear on what my passion is. Um, does it mean that I need to, for my passion to be my like business? Mm. it's actually not necessarily the case many people can have a job and then can live their passion like music for if many people have a, a day job and then they play their music in the evening and they are perfectly satisfied mm. yeah. the passion and the, the passion and the job do not have to converge mm -hmm. um, and I would even say that making the passion and the job um, converge and be one is actually quite an undertaking and it's quite a challenge yeah yeah you know? It's a blessing when it happens, if it happens. Um, yeah, but you're, you're, you're doing it. <laughs> and, and, one, and one last thing is, um, if people want to work with you one-to-one, -one, how, how does that work now you're online? What does that look like for people? Well, um, now I'm, 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 I'm technically, I'm preparing to be back. I, I could be back today to my physical office. So... Mm -hmm. um, it's actually possible now to go back to, to the normal um, physical, physical presence. But, sorry, but even if we, uh, even online, like the, the process is usually the same. The process is anyone who wants to work with me, we would have a 15 to 30 minute conversation where we would get in touch, understand what the situation at hand is, what the objectives are, um, for me to ask some questions, for them to ask some questions. And if we are comfortable, if we connect, if we feel that there is work to be done there, then we, we move it to having uh, sessions. The session plans usually are between kind of three, in hypnotherapy, usually between kind of, let's say, three and six sessions mm -hmm. um, to allow, again, for the work to sink in, to allow repetition, practice, etc. Coaching is a whole different thing because coaching is, you can, you know, it can be an ongoing relationship. It can be um, over many years. It can evolve. So... Um, it's a totally different framework, but as far as therapy is concerned, um, depending again on the subject, on the, how deep it is, you know, um, but the, the minimum I recommend now is, is, is two to three sessions at least to allow the work to really settle in. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'll put all your links in the uh, description so people can connect with you. I highly recommend Ahmed. He's, he's a beautiful beautiful <laughs> well very powerful hypnotherapist and he'll hold a safe space for you so if you're based in london you can see him in the flesh or online so um thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and um yeah it's been great to have you and um yeah i, I look forward to seeing more of what you create and we'll drop all the links so people can connect to that yeah Thank, thank you very much. It's been a true pleasure and uh, very happy to, to reconnect with you. And uh, yeah, all the best with the project. I love thank it. You. Thank you. And you. And for anyone watching, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone that would benefit from this. We'd be very grateful. So take care and we'll see you all again. Bye, Ahmed. Thanks Bye. so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye.